We are back with Wage Rage, and uh, Anthony Scott Pyatt is over there, and uh, we are going to look at the odds for a couple of big fights. We've been sort of waiting around. Not a lot of big fights, you know, hitting, uh, you know, weekend after weekend. Uh, we done our thing with the parlays. You can check those updates that are up on the internet. But right now, we're going to look at a couple of fights week to 10 days away, and uh, these are fire. Oh, wow. Been waiting for these, you know, really for a long time. Uh, injuries put off the Inouye fight. Uh, negotiations put off the Terrence Crawford Errol Spence fight. Stephen Fulton is traveling to Japan to take on Inouye for Undisputed. Inouye's moving up a weight class. Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. This has pound for pound implications. Um, you know, uh, it, listen, there's a lot of pound for pound. Ring Magazine, of course, started it. Uh, Independent UK, CBS, ESPN, uh, Sports Illustrated. If you take them all like Rotten Tomatoes does and looks at movies, you can get a good idea of who's considered by these pros. Um, and let's face it, these are the same pros, many of them, that, that, that make the rankings for the belts when, when you look at Ring. Um, and these are also a lot of the same media guys and voters that vote for Hall of Fame. Uh, so it does help bring fame to people which helps make fights and it helps with legacy and uh so you know there's there's an argument whether pound for pound means something or not i think it helps in the long run um but regardless this week is pound for pound week naoa in a way can beat stephen fulton on tuesday it's 6 a.m let's not complain let's be good boxing fans and watch this fight 6 a.m eastern uh <clears throat> We're going to watch that fight. We're going to enjoy it. If Inouye wins, and I think he will, he's probably number one in the world right now. Does he lose it six days later? If Terrence Crawford can win very convincingly, you've got an argument that Crawford should be number one in the world. And uh, I don't know that argument will be settled unless something super dramatic happens. If Errol can beat Terrence Crawford and Inouye wins, for example, Inouye stands alone at number one. Uh, folks, don't get mad that Spence wouldn't be my number one pick or Fulton wouldn't be number one. That's simply not how it works. Uh, Canelo Alvarez moving up in weight to fight Bivol. If Canelo had won that fight, he may well be number one in the world right now. Bivol was not, and Bivol, in fact, did not move even above Canelo. So there's a lot of debate there. I'm sure uh, I've had many of those debates with folks. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, listen, I'm kind of telling you a little bit of my opinion. But also, I know how these lists are likely to go. So I'm trying to read the zeitgeist and let you folks know that these fights have implications for the number one slot, which right now comes down to Usyk, Terrence Crawford, and Naoa Inoue. Those three are really the three with the chance at it. The odds on these fights, Naoa Inoue minus 400, Stephen Fulton plus 280. I want to point out to some of my friends who are strong on Stephen Fulton. Those are the same odds of Tyson Fury at minus 400 and Francis Naganu at plus 280. That is an 80% chance that Tyson Fury will win. That's an 80% chance that Naoa Inouye will win. So <clears throat> I have some friends who I respect who are picking Stephen Fulton. I would caution them to be careful with their money. But at plus 280, a win is a valuable return. I understand that. Um, that's, that's where that fight is. Errol, what, say again? I said, you're allowed to have a hunch, you know, or, or, or a favorite. That's what I was going to say, uh, yep. briefly to endorse your method of, of, of looking at a wide range of, of lists and see what other people are thinking. And that's what you get because I, there are lists that are going to be slanted for certain people. You know, <laughs> there's some lists that might not put in a way there because, they're just not not big on the Japanese scene in general. Um, they consider it maybe just a little bit less. You know what I mean? Uh, so that Rotten Tomatoes look is really the way you get a fair look because that get, lets you mix it up. And I think you're right. I think, you know, I think Crawford's been my number one pound for pound for years now because I just don't think anybody's better than him. But, yep. um, you know, uh, in a way, to me... And I've watched in a way since he was, you know, a pup coming up. And he, he comes from a fighting family where his brothers also got a push and things like that. But he was the cream of the crop. 
And this is what I consider perfect execution, trying to bring a fighter along. They knew they had a talent right away. So they brought him along carefully. They still, at this point, you know, Stephen Fulton, you know, even Canelo knows you make the big money in Vegas. So he'll take his fights to Vegas. Thank you. You know, in a way, still prefers to bring people into Japan most of the time. And it's true. You know, th those types of things are little advantages that are going to be working against Stephen Fulton. Listen, uh, you know, if I were Stephen Fulton, this fight was, you know, scheduled for March and he got bagged or I think it was March. And uh, I would have gone to Japan anyway. I would have spent two weeks over yeah. there. Just, right. you know, if, if he's going over there for the first time now with a fight, he's going over there to fight for the first time. Every time that happens, it's just an experience. And it just depends, you know, how well do you adjust to travel? How well do you adjust to diet, new food, the time zones, uh, language you have to barriers. Assimilate. Yeah, language barriers. Do they make, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story. And this comes from the MMA world, but very similar to the types of things that could happen to you in Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, By a guy with an old time 1940s camera. And the guy blinds him as he heads into the ring. And a younger fighter asked Delusia, what do you be careful for? And, he, and Delusia remembered that story. And sure enough, at a future fight somewhere in Japan, picture please. And the guy comes out and Jason Delusia says, I swear it was even the same guy years later. Oh my goodness. So they're, they're working it. Now I will say uh, him assimilating, Fulton assimilating, to Japan is a great idea. It's not as much a disadvantage, however. I, I, I was talking about this Australia, for example, many other countries. Uh, if, if you think back to early on when I was calling fights and we came on Cage Rage, one of the things that got Chad's attention was when I mentioned Jeff Horn at about 50 to 1 was great value against Manny Pacquiao. And Chad said, Jeff Horn's not a Manny Pacquiao-level fighter, is he? I said, oh, gosh, no. By no means. But they're fighting in Australia. It's a bunch of, you know, Irish criminals that were thrown over there generations ago. And they, they love their local boys. They're going to drink a lot of beer. Uh, I just feel like something strange could go on. So me and the fellas watch the fight. Pacquiao's clearly winning at the end of the fight. And the judges rain, uh, you know, raised Jeff Horn's hand for some inexplicable reason, and we well, want to heck up. You know? <laughs> you know, and I did, I think you run into that everywhere, all over the world. They want their hometown guys. I, I can repeat another boxing story. We had a guy who I believe actually got to the interim world championship level here in Costa Rica named Tito Vasquez. But early on in his career, he went to do a fight in Uruguay. And he went out jogging, you know, in his suit and, uh, you know, his uh, weight cutting gear uh, around the hotel. And uh, he was assaulted and he returned to the hotel naked. They took all his clothes. <laughs> oh, no. So you run into, anytime you're on the road, you run into X Factor. The Japanese wow. have a stability, seemingly, you know, civil nature about them and stuff. They can be very devious. I think at least the Australians, yeah, uh, beer drinking guys with a lot of jewelry and gold and, you know, ostentatiousness. Hey, you're in their world. That's right. And you do mention how the Japanese are sort of more quiet. And that's maybe not as much of a hometown advantage, uh, although it's really strange. The, the promotion could say, okay, Mr. Fulton, you know, uh, be downstairs in the lobby at five and our translator will be there and we'll take you to the gym to train. So Fulham's like, great, I get the train and, you know, da da da. Gets down there, everything's there except the translator. That's now, that's now a stressful trip that you didn't Absolutely. need. Absolutely. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And, or, or it's 45 minutes late. And yeah, it, just show up late. late. It, trust me, that's not... Because oh, you know, there was an accident and stuff like that. No, no, no. That's a that's uh, that's Musashi. That's that's, Musashi yeah. level uh, uh, mind tricks right there. And uh, you're absolutely right that when the commission is involved, that 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 likes the home hometown boy absolutely. So, 
<laughs> I mean, but, but it's going to be interesting. They're not, they're not quite as biased, though, the judges, I don't feel, um, in, they in Japan. They know their fashion. So, That's, I mean, they yeah. have a core. It's not a huge sport in Japan, but the people that are there, the boxing commission, I, I, That's right. I'm going to have to look up. But I think at this point he's older, and I think his post is most, mainly ceremonial. But um, the uh, head of the boxing commission in Japan is a Hall of Famer from their 50, time fighting in the 50s and stuff. I, I don't want to get his name wrong, so I'll try to look it up here. There you go. Uh, so, as I say, that fight, if in a way wins... You know, at least at least I'm going to put him number one as of right then, and we'll see what happens. Just days later on Saturday, Errol Spence Jr. Uh, plus 116, taking on Terrence Bud Crawford, a minus 146. This fight's a little bit closer, obviously, and uh, a lot of people I like on both sides of this debate uh, about this fight. I'll I'll say that um, only two guys, I believe, Kel Brook and Sean Porter have fought both Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. And uh, I won't I won't try to botch this here if, if I get the, the round exactly. But let's just say Terrence Crawford finished them quicker. I think they were decisions against Errol. And I think Terrence Crawford uh, finished them by knockout. Uh, if, if Spence got a knockout, it was after Crawford. So I remember look, doing the comparison uh, my comparison was, of course, less important than hearing both Kelbrook and Sean Porter pick Terrence Crawford uh, to win this fight. Uh, talking about ring IQ, talking about adjustments, talking about uh, the, the ability to land power shots uh, now, yeah, that are significant. You know, I mean, that, that just about says it all because, you know, me and you is just talk, but, you know, that's peers saying yeah. making that pick and that's you know uh a big factor and i think crawford has a lot of intangibles um and too you know like and, and I, I i don't know there's so very little to not like about errol spence i mean the guy's you know practically perfect but you know i kind of see him he's a it's going to not be a fair comparison, I think. But maybe with the Olympic pedigree and stuff like that, where and then you got Crawford, who's a little bit more dog. Mm -hmm. You know, could mm -hmm. could Errol Spence have a sliver of Anthony Joshua in him? All right, All right. You know, I I would take Crawford in a street fight in this one, too. Oh, I you know? absolutely would. And when you talk about that uh, Joshua comparison, I think there's something else in their style, which is when, when they're... When their game is working, Joshua Spence and, and many other fighters, when it's working and they're in control and they're on their front foot, things are going great. When they're walking a guy down and they're playing their game, they can look wonderful. Um, but look at Anthony Joshua get put on his back foot, you know, and he's and he's not looked good against Usyk and Ruiz and. He, truthfully, he's won some fights where he hasn't looked that great in. Um, it, it, and so as Spence, instead of being allowed to be the bully, gets bullied, I've seen that scenario where the bully crumbles when, when they finally hit somebody with some resistance back at him, you know. Yeah, and I don't know that he has the adjustment. What, what can Errol do to adjust? I haven't... I, I've seen him look really great in a lot of fights, but he always looks sort of that one way that's why i love lennox lewis you never knew what you're going to get because he knew how you know to give the other fighter you know that medicine <laughs> that it's worked to get yeah it's, can arrow make those adjustments i know bud can that's why i'm picking pretty solidly with bud so far you know i know he can make adjustments i, I what do you see on that miguel <clears throat> yeah, like I, I i give crawford the type of credit that made him, you know, I think he's been number one pound for pound for five years. Keep in mind, he's 35 now. So, yeah, you're going to tell me, you know, he was probably better at 28 and 30 in terms of physical sharpness, skills and things. But now he's got experience and a savvy nature and a proven killer instinct, too. I always laugh. He got into trouble a few years back. And uh, I don't know the whole story, but I, I, you, you can just imagine it in your head. And I think he was having a, a car of his work done. 
and the repairs were done and stuff. And he went to pick up the car and he didn't pay for it. He just he just took it. It's like, oh, no. it's not going to be a situation where, you know, if Bud wants his car, you're going to be able to say, well, Bud, you know, no, you know, uh, so I, I, I found that to be funny, but, but, but I think it, it, it shows kind of like, a, you know, a street mentality, kind of like a, a you know, watching out for you i you know i obviously it's something you shouldn't do right but yeah, I do we, think- we, we do not endorse this here <laughs> at wage trades or buy a picks right right you know, right but, the disclaimer but you, but i hear what you're saying situation. you could be a situation where you know at least crawford didn't knock the guy out you know yeah. what i mean i mean yeah. i'm sure he was intimidated yeah, yeah you know i'd be but he didn't knock the guy out he just took his car he said, there's yeah. nothing that you do to stop him you know what i mean <laughs> so, you know, I I just think it speaks to a guy that, you know, will do what it takes. You know what I mean? I just and I I always like that about him. I like that about him in the ring. When he hurts you, he rarely lets you off the hook. He knows it. Mm-hmm. And you re- you know mm-hmm. even at smaller weight classes, there are very few fighters that you're ever gonna find that go from righty to lefty, from right to lefty, multiple times in a round. You know, I mean you can see them say, All right. Third round, we're gonna go to Southpaw. You know, right. that's more. You know, now fighters adjust a lot more, but Crawford's at the cutting edge. Of it. Yeah, he does it as 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 I said, as the adjustment makes sense to him in the moment. So, uh, so yeah. Hey, normally we save our picks for the Piat picks later in the week, but uh, we've already done a, a an episode uh, on uh, Crawford and Spence a few weeks ago. That's been available. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is the pound for pound parlay. That's what I'm calling this. The pound for pound parlay is uh, the two guys that I think have a shot at, at number one after next week. Naoma Inouye at minus 400, Terrence Crawford at minus 146. Amazingly comes out to a nice plus 110. I'm putting $100 on it. We get paid back 210 uh, in 62 cents. Why not? Uh, so this makes a fun, uh, again, this is Tuesday at 6 a.m. for the NOA fight. Uh, Crawford and Spence will fight Saturday, uh, the 29th, technically 12 a.m. on the 30th is what it's called on yep. the books. But, uh, but that is Saturday night and it is Tuesday morning. Two of the best in the world. There's no excuse if you're a boxing fan not to watch these and we may as well get something on it. Listen, still not a lot of fights for uh, our eight legs. They just haven't been there the past few weeks. We did get to our 100 uh, picks on those eight legs and our locks, 96 and four overall. That film is up as well. And uh, But we're going to at least make this bet. Inouye and Crawford parlayed together, pound for pound parlay. And we'll look at something here as uh, we question. get a little closer. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question a little Look for the fans here. Hopefully we don't get this confused. Mm. Let's say that you're one of the people out there that's just stuck on Errol Spence. What happens to that parlay if you do Inouye and Spence? Oh, that'd be that'd be a nice one for you. Um, it'll probably hit a little bit. You know, it'll probably get to 250 on the payback, right? You know, I would think so. Let's go ahead and, uh, and and just pop that in for the folks here. It won't take me but a second. Um, if we go, here's Inouye already. And then let's go. Spence is at a plus 116, let's not forget. Yeah. Um, so that brings you to a plus 170. A plus 170. So, of course, your 100 would, would to win the 170 uh, so altogether. You get more than 250, you get 270 back. You get 270 back total. Total, but correct. That's, you, know, you know, that's an acknowledgement that, yeah. hey, you know, some, sometimes, you know, if Errol Spence wins, I won't be the most shocked person on the planet either. You know what I mean? No. Because it's, no. good. it's about executing your will. Uh, but, you know, that does that. How, how does that partly look if you put Fulton in? Uh, oh well, then it'll go. It'll skyrocket here. Let's let's hit that just for fun. So plus well, two eighty. Oh now. Well, we're, <laughs> so if you really believe Fulton, and I have some, I have some people who I like, 
Let's uh, speak with it. Think Fulton and Spence are your winners. That's a plus 720, folks, for just a two leg parlay. That's a plus 720. So, hey, Fulton's the bigger guy. Now, listen, folks, when you talk about this, let's be realistic, okay? Um, those are great odds, and I'm, and I'm not telling you don't have some fun with it, okay? But Stephen Fulton is 21 and 0 with eight knockouts. So tell me the path to beating Inouye when you're 21 and 0 with eight knockouts. You're just going to beat him because you're a better boxer? Because you're not. And, and, and you, you know, judges delight, you know, in Japan, you're going to tell, no. you know, you better <laughs> crash, you know, and you're, uh, not, you're not faster than Inouye. Being bigger than him, see, folks, listen. Fulton's bigger. Well, yeah, he's bigger. He's slower. He's bigger, but he's not faster. In a way, he's faster, so he scores more points without any risk of being knocked out by Pillow Hands Fulton. That's pretty yeah, clear. I, I think, you know, d- despite the low knockout ratio, Fulton, uh, I think is, if you're from Philadelphia, you got some dogging. You know what I mean? And, and, and the boxing from there is very proud, so I'm sure that he's coming with his A game and stuff. And at the bottom line is, is this is he's gonna need to he's gonna need to let Inouye throw on him, uh, in my opinion. And he's gonna need to survive that in style and take it right back to him. Yep, Maybe he's in gonna first have to. round, somehow, second round, as soon hold back, let Inoue try to take you out, and if you survive, you gotta go in and kill him. And, and the bottom line is, is you got to get into Inouye's head because psychologically, if you just start to box 12 rounds, Inouye's going to win on the judges or he's yep. going to, if he's good enough, he'll knock you out. He's going to, he, 20, 24 and 0 with 21 knockouts. Um, knockouts include against Nonito Donaire. He did have a decision over Donaire, but then the knockout. Okay. Uh, and then his early early on i think his fourth fight was a decision and maybe his eighth fight and then donaire so only those three fights have not been knockouts uh jason maloney nonito donaire all got knocked out um so i yeah. yes he's moving up and wait a little bit but i just listen we talked about this before with Margarito and, and uh, Pacquiao. A 17-pound difference there. And Pacquiao nearly destroyed Margarito's vision. You know, uh, I don't know how the fight continued. It was so much faster than him. I, I, Fulton, Fulton, I'll give credit. The disparity in, in... Like, I don't think Margarito's, you know, on Fulton's level. The difference between Margarito and Pacquiao is less than the difference between Fulton and Inouye. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But, man, going to Japan, and I've been, you know, on that trip 15 times with fighters on fight week, uh, cornering a fighter, being part of the corner and stuff like that. And if they want to make it difficult for you, they can. And, yep. you know, it, it also depends. There are some people that are like, it's so cool, I'm in Japan. And then there's some people like, man, no one understands me. I got no food, you know. And it just depends on the type of person. You don't know how that's going to go if you haven't tried it. And all right. that, figuring all that out on fight week is not cool. You know, I, yeah, I, so I hope Fulton went over there last, you know, cancellation and that might help him. But I think that first time fighting in Japan is something that's a tall order. And to be honest with you, in boxing, it's rare. Um, yep. You know, it's, it, and this is, Nothing. A trip to England is nothing compared to that. That he's un- going to undergo to go to Tokyo. And I no, not at, his, uh, the Japanese Hall of Famer, who is the uh, uh, at least the symbolic head of the boxing commission, or was until you know recent. He's older now, but he fought in the sixties, um, fought legendary fights against Brazilian Hall of Famer Eder Joffre, and his name is Fighting Harada, and he's the oh, chair- that's right, that's right, Harada. So. Um, yep, yep. They, they're a proud boxing community. It's smaller. You know, they're paying homage to their Hall of Famer from the 60s by keeping him in an honorary role in his 80s and things like that. But you get the idea that Inouye is the chosen one. Yeah. So, like, a lot 
is riding on Inouye, just keeping that stuff going. Um, and, I, you know, whether you look at it or not, I think, you know, obviously Chocolatito is not there anymore. But at some point, Chocolatito was the guy that got a million dollar payday for that weight, those weight classes down there. Inoue is waiting for an opponent to create a big fight. And then he'll take a risk maybe and leave Vegas, you know, go to Vegas or do something like that. In other words, Fulton's not, the, they don't view Fulton as that risk. Fulton's yeah. just another name on the list here. And what you have to take note of is they've been perfect so far. They and they're both it. undisputed. Let's let's keep that in mind. Not only is he not a huge risk, uh, Fulton's undisputed. Inouye's undisputed. It's it's double undisputed, uh, and and that is going to be historic as well. So, uh, hey, Pickard, you know, yeah. Just to say, I don't know if he's going to be a huge risk or not, but he needs to be a risk for Inouye. Fulton needs to go out there and challenge Inouye and and let Inouye know that he's not going to back down. If not, and they fall, they lull into a match where in a way he's going to pick his spots looking for the big shot. There's no way the judges see it for him. So, nope. Fulton, yeah, in a way, you know, easy unless he's, if Fulton shakes it up. I'm going to be up at six in the morning to see. You know, actually, it's four in the morning where I am. So, Oh, boy. You know, uh, but yeah, I think it'll be uh, well worth watching just to see because I do think in a way he's talented. And, and I think yeah. when I say, sometimes I've called him a construct. But I don't mean that in a bad way. He, like I said earlier, he was spotted when he was young as a talent. And they babied him and bought him along. He's a world champion, undisputed, the whole thing. He's in the play for number one. If, if if it takes writing a check to be number one on the pound for pound list, he'll, he's got the sponsorship. He's got people taken care of. And everybody behind him, he don't want to let them down against Stephen Fulton. Right. No, no, I don't see that one happening. And as I say, those are the same odds that Tyson Fury has, which uh, minus 400 translates to an 80% chance that uh, in a way comes out the winner. And I tend to agree with that. Uh, and, and for a little bit of background on the other fight to switch over, Terrence Crawford, uh, let's look at his last five. Well, let's look at, I mean, his last 10 have been knockouts. Okay. Including Sean Porter. Uh, Kel Brook right before that. You see Amir Khan, Jeff Horn, who we spoke about earlier, Felix Diaz, uh, John Molina. So those are the, those are his last 10 have been knockouts. And if we switch over to Earl that we were talking about, his last five are not as impressive. He took out uh, Jordanus Yugas. Yugas had his moments in that fight, honestly, uh, against Earl. Danny Garcia... And Mikey Garcia, both unanimous decisions. But Sean Porter, who we just mentioned was beaten in the 10th round by Terrence Crawford, was a split decision for Errol Spence. So he barely won the fight against Sean Porter. Uh, I mean, you know, a split decision is pretty tough. 116-111 uh, on two judges. 116-111. The other judge, 115-112 for Sean Porter. So... Yeah. It wasn't I, razor thin, but uh, but you know it wasn't as convincing as Crawford. <laughs> well, here's the other thing that you know, if, if you want to put a microscope to it too, another little blemish there for you know, Mikey Garcia comes from boxing pedigree galore. He had a perfect career, took two years off, jumped up two weight classes, and threw it all away. Yeah. You know, and I, I wonder what would have happened if he had been, imagine if he was in the mix right now with the Teofimo Lopez's and that level of guys. Right, stayed at and that he, level, yeah. He went at that right weight class. Way. And that, you know, a guy coming up two weight classes really to, to meet a welterweight, that was a, a fight that was no threat to Spence. You know, yeah. and uh, Crawford has less of that. Ugas, I think, is a real threat. I love Ugas, and, and Ugas is a... Uh, you know, that uh, Cuban pedigree is, is something that, you know, I admire because Ugas is not a gold medalist, if I recall, and he's not, he, I, he's just a dog from the amateur team, you know, ranked number eight. But the first seven Cubans are all world beaters too, you know? So, and, and I think he wrote a nice end of his career to, for him. He had a comeback period 
where he defeated some people. Uh, gave Earl Spence some trouble. And uh, Ugas is a guy to be respected. I have no problem with that one. But I get the feeling that Crawford would handle Ugas. You know? So... I do, too. I do, too. Hey, since you mentioned the Cubans, uh, Robisi Ramirez is going to be featured um, on the Tuesday card. He's going to Japan, believe it or not, fighting uh, Satoshi Samuzi. Uh, he's, a, he's a pretty strong favorite in this fight. It is for the w, WBO World Featherweight title. Um, but uh, Cuban... Robisi Ramirez will be on that Japanese card with Inouye and Fulton. Yeah, if, if you haven't seen him, if you haven't heard of him yet, uh, maybe worth cashing in because when they, when you come, look, the Cuban system, I don't know how perfectly it can be compared to when they were, you know, communism was strong and they were a satellite of the Soviet Union before the fall and things like that. But they were very, very proud of their Olympic pedigree. That's right. And there's certain things that the island, you know, that they, they kept it up. And from what you can tell with the likes of, you know, even Ugas, but then you had real guys like uh, Rigandau. Now, I don't want to say that Ugas is not a real guy, but gold medalist like Rigandau. Um, and, and there were many of them. Uh, one of them fought Canelo and still thinks he won. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, there were we've seen elite cuban boxers they do come with holes like the amateur game doesn't translate as easily for some as for others well so let me what... let me back you up on that real quick uh robisi ramirez those holes were were exposed um uh, if you look at his record robisi he's 12 and 1. that one was his very first fight and it's Yo, a classic that's... example of what you're saying they they, they bring him up right but it's different than the pros. And if you only have four rounds in a professional fight, he lost to an Aiden Gonzalez, who was 4-2-2 two, and two at the time. Uh, and it was a split decision. So it was close. Now, I've looked into this fight before because I was curious about it. Uh, Robisi got knocked down in the first round of a four-round fight. One of the judges went ahead and gave all the rounds to Gonzalez because it was 35-40. to 40. In only a four-round fight, he won by five points. Another judge, 36-39. Uh, and then one judge gave all the rounds to Robisi except that first round, which makes Robisi a winner at 38-37 on only one judge's scorecard. For the split decision in his professional debut in 2019. From there, uh, three KOs in a row, a couple of decisions back on track by beating a 14 and one Eric Donovan an undefeated 21 and0 Abraham Nova was then beaten got back on track a little bit got but back we'll on see. track with beating dog Bay Isaac dog Bay I love I love the story that you just painted too because to me boxing like the the sport also has this kind of like uh, intelligence to it you know and sometimes when you disrespect boxing, like, you know, you're going to try your amateur game and a pro game. Yeah. They even called Vasil Lomachenko with that one. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Orlando Salido, second fight. He didn't even, he did not realize what a guy with 50, an absolute dog who decided he wasn't even going to bother making weight. Right, <laughs> right. So he's going to show up to fight. And now you're dealing with all that. And the guy's got 50 fights and knows how to use it. Hey, he took a loss, and you know what? By the end of that fight, Lomachenko had solved him, and he was and he was already fighting 12 rounders. And in a 15 round fight, Lomachenko probably gets him. But even the best have an adjustment to make from the amateur game over. And uh, we'll see. It'll, it's interesting. Hey, if you're up at four in the morning to watch, in a way, why not tack on a little Cuban action? It's good. That's right. And for me, I probably only have to get up at 5 a.m. to catch Rubisi and then the 6 a.m. This is, again, I'm I'm Eastern and uh, you're what is technically mountain called time. mountain time, right? Yeah, yeah. mountain time. So, uh, hey, those of you on the East Coast, uh, you know, re rejoice. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, it's going to be worth it. Trust me. These are a couple of great fights. And again, I don't mind. If people think Crawford is number one 
before this fight and after this fight. I, I don't disagree with him. I don't disagree with you, Miguel. Uh, Crawford has the claim to be in number one for five years. I can see an argument either way. But what I don't want to hear is I don't want to hear you complain about who the mayor of your town is if you didn't vote. And if you can't get up and watch this Nao Naola Inaway fight, it's going to be hard for you to win an argument against me to say anybody else is number one in the world if you don't watch the damn fight. Let's support boxing, folks. We got great boxing. We got two of the best in the world in one week. Rejoice this. And also, a little shout out to some of you UK guys. They're complaining about having to get up and pay uh, 19 pounds, 20 bucks for this fight. Like 30 bucks, but still. 30. 30 bucks, okay. We got to pay 80 damn $85 for this fight here in the States. I'm not saying that's right. I wish it was cheaper for all of us. Um, but $20 is no excuse to not watch this fight either uh, to, to my uh, English friends out there, okay? Let's get it. Let's support boxing this week. We, we've asked for the big fights. Now, here they are. If you can shell out the money and watch these on pay-per-view uh, in, in, in other ways. I'm not even sure what the Tuesday's fight is on. Miguel, are you... I guess we could uh looking it up right now for us. Okay, so. let's yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and steer you in the right direction. Here we go. Um uh, so I've got ESPN and Sky Sports. So I know that Sky Sports um in in England, ESPN here in the States. So and that's uh, great, yeah, to get it on ESPN is lucky because that's generally, you know, where your cable package. So right. hey, it's free, you know. Yeah, so you I love that quality boxing. Uh, ESPN has another fight on Friday, folks. Uh, Cineasa Estrada fighting uh, Leonela Utica. And then Saturday's pretty packed. Uh, BTS Sports has Liam Davis, Jason Cunningham. And, of course, the one we're all here for, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. That's an 8 p.m. Eastern start time on Showtime. Of course, that will be uh, pay-per-view. So it's, it's, it's a good weekend. It's a good week. Let's be real. Tuesday the 25th is the kickoff uh 6 a.m eastern four if you're mountain time as miguel is in costa rica so uh hey looking forward to that this week uh, uh, please subscribe we'll try and get you up to date if we can come up with a, a an eight leg lock on bet us um and uh and we'll, we'll we'll take it back a look at all these odds again and it's going to be a great week um Oh, not much going on, but a little something in UFC, Miguel, if we want to throw that in here before we wrap. Uh, oh. Fairly interesting. We kind of said uh, Dana White probably doesn't care about uh, Naganu signing for the Fury fight. And then we read that indeed, after he said uh, it's a clown show and Naganu shouldn't be even going for it, these crossovers are a joke, uh, then Naganu signs you know <laughs> it's almost comical Naganu signs a contract that allows him to go for the boxing match and instantly Dana White suggests John Jones fight Tyson Fury uh the hypocrisies are getting a little thick um on yeah. this one I'm not real sure why the play was made as such I think I think I, I think I saw something where uh, Ngannou's management was claiming, you know, that the UFC is probably doing some interference there. I think that's what the what, uh, headline was. And, you know, when Dana used to run interference, it does seem half-hearted anyway, but I do think in this position that that could be what they were doing. Keep in mind, you know, the initial starter of this, you know, how many people can call Dana White <clears throat> directly on the phone and have him pick up because he he's got so many people coming at him from so many different angles he's probably got some tears and the people that he picks up for directly will be very few at a certain point in time but guess who started the uh tyson fury john jones feud joe rogan all <laughs> right right his friend you know so it's like not like he couldn't you know maybe it was just random but um <laughs> you know what was said would pretty clearly get under Tyson Fury's skin, you know. And so I, I think uh, that Ngannou's camp reading that as them trying to interfere and bother with the fight, 
Probably not far off, but I, I, I think though that um it's half-hearted on the part of the UFC. It's not them calling the cable companies trying to get people canceled and think I mean things that they may have done in the past, you know. So like when Dana Dana usually finishes moves like this, and this seems half-hearted, but I can see what Ngannou's saying. You know, Ngannou sweated this out. He got what he wanted. More power to him. I'm happy for him. But I think they made him sweat it a little bit. He worried about it. So he's saying what he feels. He's speaking from the heart. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, just looking, since I've got the schedule up, by the way, quick look ahead. Uh, Anthony Joshua and Dillian White, August 12th. And Art, uh, uh, Artur Butterbiev, Callum Smith, August 19th. Alexander Yusick and Daniel Dubois, August 26th, in a fight that has ramifications for the heavyweight division, of course. Um, Jared Anderson, another great heavyweight, Rodinko, August 26th. Uh, the rematch between Zhang and Joe Joyce is September 23rd. Canelo Alvarez, Jermel Charlo, September 30th. Uh, so we've got some pretty big fights coming up. Of course, Fury and Nagano on the 28th. And then we'll have, uh, I think, Wilder in Ruiz is an official eliminator for the bout, uh, for the championship against Tyson Fury. Now, he, while that's happening, if Fury gets through the Nagano, there, he can still pick a voluntary. So I think he can still fight Usyk. If not, there'll be a mandatory. And uh, it looks like it would be Wilder again. So that's on the horizon, folks. Wilder 4 uh, versus Fury. I'm at this point ready to see uh, the Usyk fight. Uh, I'm not against seeing the, the, the Wilder fight again. Um, but I think the Usyk fight answers a lot more questions uh, in the division currently and about some legendary status, about some, you know, it, kind of where we can place some of these guys as all-time greats. I think, again, the winner between Fury and Usyk is is on a on a pedestal, in my opinion. Yeah, we we got to get to some of those fights. Unfortunately, you forgot Nate Diaz and Jake Paul. <laughs> I didn't forget them, sir. <laughs> I purposely looked over. Hey, you know, we did talk about that before, and I know there was, you know, Diaz can punch, but. <laughs> I've now seen some footage of him fighting a who, who appears to be a, a, a pretty amateur boxer, and I didn't like what I see. So we can get more into that later, Miguel. But I'm not liking what I see from uh, Nate Diaz training uh, leaked, as they call it, leaked video. Uh, I'd like to see the the uh, you know how true some of that is, and if he, if there's you know. There's some stuff to be researched, is what I'm saying, folks. Let's we'll get into that before we offer any bets. Ask you a quick question here, and I don't know if you've got Instagram handy there, but uh, how many followers does Jake Paul have, and right. how many followers does Nate Diaz have? I wonder if they're comparable numbers because we, I was talking on another podcast about a fantasy boxing match for UFC guy Brandon Moreno fighting Ryan Garcia. And they were like, you know, Brandon's got great, you know, two two million social media. And I was like, yeah, but I think Garcia, Ryan Garcia's got 10 million. I think, you know, Nate is not going to be that far behind Jake Paul. Let's see here. I've, I've got the numbers. I'll go, I will send these to you as well. Oh, well, there's uh, what you would say a disparity there, there for okay. sure. Uh, Give it to me. I, that's we need is facts here. We need facts. Okay, so here, here's what here's what I've come up with. I'm gonna call him back up to make sure. Uh, Nate Paul comes in at six point four million. Who's Nate that? Diaz. Nate Diaz. Yeah, six, I was okay. thinking the 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 the, the fight uh, hashtag Whoa. already here. Uh, Nate Diaz uh, with with the. Uh, Nate Diaz 209 is, is, okay, yep, is his Twitter. Sure. Okay, 6.4 million. I have Jake Paul at 23.6 million. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what's selling the fight is the, guy, the guy's got that juice. Uh, like I said, Ryan Garcia made it to 10 million. And Ryan Garcia, you know, Nate Diaz is putting a lot of miles, so it shows you boxing in some ways does have a, a different type of attraction. So we'll see. 
We'll see what comes up here. But a lot of exciting times. But this weekend, I think, uh, you know, the pound for pound parlay is something that I, I we should keep an eye on. It's going to be a lot of fun. I like that pound for pound parlay, folks. And it kind of puts our neck on the line there a little bit. In, in a way, because I believe in these picks and we'll see what happens. I mean, that's what we're saying. I, we do hope we come with some locks. This is this is a fun little parlay. We do hope we get you, uh, this, you know, the bet US lock that we've had so much success with. But this is a fun two piece to get plus money on two like that. So, yeah, 100, uh, 100 bucks, you know, plus 10, you know, yeah. double your plus 10. It's nice, man. So, nah, yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to the fights. Hey, let us know what you think in the comments. Love to interact with you. Uh, share with your friends. Subscribe and all that good stuff. We do appreciate it. Uh, that is Miguel Iterati coming to you from Costa Rica over the airwaves. Woo. I'm Anthony Pyatt coming from your stateside. We do appreciate all your listeners and I uh, hope you're making money on our bets. <laughs>